Hello and welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton, and we're back in the Brock Bourbon Bar, and I, I think I see a blood moon arising. I think you do. It's spooky season. Da, 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 da. And I can't wait to drink this bourbon. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong Don't with really you, Don't really know where I was going with that. Da, <laughs> Obviously. Da, da, da. <laughs> Gomez. <laughs> Gomez. <Olé. laughs> Gomez done lost his mind. Anyway, uh, we are drinking uh, Starlight's latest release, The Blood Moon. Um, it comes out technically this weekend. This podcast won't be released for a couple this weeks. weekend for a couple weeks. But anyway, it will have been a recent release. And we are going to basically taste it up against last year. So, Johnny, this one goes on to you. What, what what are we sipping on, brother? We are sipping on two different bottles of last year's and this year's release of Blood Moon at 106 proof. Are they both 106? They are both 106 proof. Interesting. All right. I, I'm calling Jinx, Tom Fullery, all kinds of good stuff there. But go ahead. Keep telling us. So both 106 proof. What's the ages on these? Um, this is going to be the first release last year was four year, um, and then this would be a five year. Are you sure it's not four and a half? Why are you asking me that now? Why don't you ask me that before? Well, just You're look the one at the who's label. looking at the label. Yeah. I think one's four and a half, the other one's five and a half. Or Google it. Because if they're a year apart and one's five and a half, I imagine the other one's four and a half. Okay. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yep. I was wrong. Good Lord. I'm looking at other parts of the label, okay? You can't well, find good help these days. Uh, well, the only reason why is because whenever I pulled out the what, last year's one, I looked at it as, oh, it's four and a half. I wonder if the other one's going to say five or five and a half. And the, so that's what I was waiting on. And when you said it was four, I was like going, so sure? I said so, at least four. Last so. week we drank Japanese whiskey. Yep. That's what I'm getting on the nose on this first one. But, really? But, but yeah. <laughs> Scott doesn't want to waste any time on this episode. Oh, He's God. immediately into it. Like it's like pungent corn, floral. Ooh, a lot of floral. Like, right. yeah. Some weird, like, sweet undertones. There's just a, t- a hint of vanilla. It's almost like that, that corn sweetness, but it, it ties back to that floor, like, almost like a floral corn sweetness. Oh, you're right. It's, it reminds me of that malt that we had a couple of weeks ago. I wonder what the mash bill is on this. Is this do you do? Does anybody know whether or not it's our, their standard like sixty twenty twenty? No, I don't know. I would. We were assuming so, but we don't know for sure one hundred percent. So, and if you if you're not familiar with the Blood Moon, it's made with the Bloody Butcher corn. So it's very similar as far as what Jep the Creed is kind of famous for, or no, infamous fun. for, depending on how you look at it. I, yeah. Listen, I was trying to be nice. My God, that nose is just so weird. Yeah, I mean, uh, as I said, it's not too off putting to me. Um, it is almost, well, it's almost like there seems to be like a higher amount of rye or barley that might be in it than, mm-hmm. than standard. Mm-hmm. But that also could come from the corn because we don't know what the strictly butcher corn would do to it. So it does have a, it does have a decent spice to it, but that corn is very, I don't know what to say. It, it's A, it's got tons of like mouthfeel. Like it's got yeah. a lot of chew to it. It's very thick and like grainy, but. Tobacco-y. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It does have a little bit of tobacco taste to it. I was about to say, I was going to throw in tobacco, because that's why I'm kind of wondering if I could sit there and kind of, you know, after I've swallowed, it's lingering. It's still lingering yeah. for quite a while. It's not the back palate I'm linger. Getting, I'm getting a weird mint on my front. I am, too. Like, underneath my tongue. It's like the underneath portion of the front part of my tongue. That could be that rye. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's... Yeah. Okay, I was... I, I, I was I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not discrediting you one bit. I mean... I'm kind you of were giving it. me a weird look, so that's what you did. So I was just trying to pull analyze two. it. Let's, yeah. yeah, pull two it. Yeah, like number two, and then and then see if I'm, I'm gonna see if I still agree with myself. But I'm getting very, very strong, very, very mint mm-hmm. on like that tobacco, front palate. Tobacco spearmint, maybe. Tobacco is kind of overriding it. I'm, I'm getting that it's it's like a the sweetness that I would expect for from like either like so, uh, like maybe a higher corn isn't there. You, it, it, if it, there is any, it's kind of a drive-by sweetness, and it goes away real fast. Now, I've never smoked a cigarette. Let me preface it by saying that. I've had <laughs> cigars. I've smoked weed. <laughs> smoked some weird shit, but never smoked a cigarette. I, honest to goodness, if I could imagine, it's a menthol oh. cigar. <laughs> it's a menthol. Menthol cigar. No, actually, I was wondering if it would be a menthol cigar. Yeah, like something like weird, because it, to me, it's like it's a lot of mint on the second pull right up front. Like a whole lot of mint. I'm wondering well, that that is weird because I honestly don't remember getting mint off this last year. I don't either. That's the thing. I mean, so, but do you, I, I'm getting it. Okay, I, I, I was no, gonna, no, no. You're, you're not. You're, the thing is, you're not wrong. 
but I mean this. But the thing is, is that this bottle has stayed in a relatively cool, dark area since last year. It's not like it's been no. It's been in the closet. It's been fermented. <laughs> we, we, it's been water. buried in the backyard for uh, a whole year. No, it's 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 been in the closet. <laughs> oh wow! Drop right. a little water in that puppy. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm going straight to the water because I'm Ooh. not liking what I'm getting <laughs> so far. And and few and far between do I have something that I do not like from Starlight. But yeah, no, I don't remember it being quite that minty last year. Whatever, whatever. Because I, I think I ended up going through two. The rise really that. popping on the nose with the water. Well, and a part of that is just it was the first year that they had released it, so there was this big hoopla about it. And mm-hmm. of course, if you're a label whore like I am, then. You immediately bought it just because it looked no. beautiful. You're a label no. whore? Yeah, it's, I, I, dude, I'm about to say I, I fall into that. It's got that, that gray corn stalks on the side. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a beautiful, beautiful label. Beautiful amber-colored label. Oh, it's great. No, I, I, it does. It, it's a beautiful label. Um, I mean, honestly, the, like everything about this whiskey from an appearance is good. Like It's got a nice color. Um, the, the look, whenever you're looking at like the legs on it, it's got good legs. It's got everything, but like, you it just is, feel like the red corn is just a hard sell. I, I don't know. I, just to me, it. I think it has something to do with how it marries with rye. Mm-hmm. I almost wonder if you did like 99, one or 95, five, like just eliminated the rye. Mm-hmm. Because I don't think it marries well with rye. Because I think Jephthah Creed, if you look at theirs, I want to say they're like a 75, 21, 4 or something like that. And I will say to me that I've I've tried three iterations of that Bloody Butcher from there, and I have not liked any of them. But like, I mean, now even that, like, in, now it's just mint and yeah, the water, weird rye. Yeah, water did nothing more for it. Uh, yeah. And it's almost like separating that mint and rye. Yeah. I'm getting like that yeasty kind of smell. With the water, mm. not that kind. Like when you're, when you walk into the fermentation area, mm-hmm. it's good yeast. It's or not to bad a yeast. place of ill repute. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might as well light the, the red night, the red light district. Light the bar seat on yeasty. fire. <laughs> little yeasty smell. Mm. I feel the bread rise. <laughs> red bread rising. <laughs> Red, red wine. Actually, I prefer that with water. I, I think it's better with water. <laughs> okay. God. I, I'm still Bless preferring you. that neat if I had to pick. <laughs> Same. Neat, neat for me on that All one. right. So, all right. Number two, five and a half year old, 106. Nose is much more approachable. Yeah, nose is much more approachable. I mean, I you, you start getting more of the bourbon tannins yep. out of this than you did that. A little more oak. One. Yep, a little wood. Now, let me throw out this. <laughs> could they, could they have just maybe in that instance for their first release last year rushed that a little bit and not let it mature as much? You, you know what? At the time, you know, it's so listen. I, I think a lot of times when you try something, right, you're like, oh, well, that's that's kind of what we thought. And if and listen, if you're if you're basing this versus Jephthah, it's still better than that. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. That being said. I'm not a big Bloody Butcher fan. Like, I've not had one yet that I've been like, oh, my God, I've got to have this. So I'm, I I was kind of hoping that, you know, Starlight would deliver in this situation. So let me go in on the second one. The nose is much more approachable, though. Yeah, I'm getting more st- uh, typical bourbon cannons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say, though, I still get a little mint on the nose. I'm scared. And I might be being, uh, what's the word? Um, a bitch. Where one, well, no, where one, where one is influencing me. It, it, so it's. I think I might be in, influenced, influenced yeah, yeah. by the first one. Where you're still kind of stuck in number one. Yeah. yeah, better than being stuck on number two. Now I do still get kind of like almost uh, a yeast undertone, even though I'm getting that bourbon, you know, kind of like that kind of a little bit char, a little bit of caramel mm-hmm. or sugars somewhere in there. But there's just that undertone if you take more of a uh, deeper. Uh, uh, nose on it. So two is is way more approachable. The mint is less. It's still there. Yep. It's not as prominent, but it's turned more to that floral though. Like I'm getting like some honeysuckle, some field greens, yep. maybe a touch of dandelion. Like there's some like little idiosyncrasies there. There is a really really nice sweetness that's in the mid palate though. Oh, absolutely yes. Yep. And I'm trying to grab that note because it's not like brown sugar. It's not vanilla e or caramel or anything like that but it's a it's a nice sweetness in that mid palate but I'm, I'm having a hard time distinguishing it so i'm hoping poll number two will help with that i think we're all kind of trying to contemplate on what, what that note is poll number two 
I will say that it's not as mouth fully as the first one was. No, no, it doesn't have this quite the same chew as the yeah. first one. Not as creamy as like that heavy chew. I'm kind of getting like a, a sweet cherry juice. Mm-hmm. I'm not getting any fruit at all. I'm getting a little cherry. But I'm going to throw something out here. I'm not disagreeing with you. A little bit strange, but almost like a graham, like graham crackers. Not like just just kind of like not like the the coated graham crackers. So if you think you just have like just a regular, just a plain old graham cracker, like like uh, maybe like like a pie filling, you know, like that graham graham cracker crust. Yes. Okay. That's where I'm kind of getting. I'm getting a hint of sweetness, but it's not like. It's yeah. not powerful. It's not push, punching yeah. like you would with a normal, like the honey yeah. graham cracker yeah. or something like that. It'd be more like that pie crust type of graham. Is it more like a honey cone, maybe? Uh, no. no. Not it's not quite it's honey. It's not that sweet. Right. That's why I said it's, it's a subtle. It's sweet, but it's like, I don't know. It's so, so hard to grab. It's almost like a really, really like dark sugar would be that had been like overly charred. Like almost like a... If you took molasses and burnt it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So each sip is basically dumbing down your tongue, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, absolutely, 100%. Because like, it's like a little bit of mint, a lot of that rye spice. You're get, I will say is, there's a lot of baking spice in here. Like there's a little yep. bit of nutmeg. There's a little bit of cinnamon. Like there's a lot of things that are coming through on that mid palate especially. But there's just a lot of mint that's kind of like... It, and it's, it's not it's, as it's not as overwhelming as the first one on the mint, but I still I still get quite a bit of mint. It's sitting there in the shadows, just trying to say, "Hey, I'm still here." Yeah. Um, now, third and fourth pulls, I just did to that, just kind of little sips. It got a little sweeter each time mm-hmm. I took an, another sip of it. Rye gets rye when you gulp it. <laughs> rye. You're a gulper. Did you try it with water? Is that what you did? No, oh, I you just tasted it with a coke and. Was like eating a piece of bread. Gotcha. Like a beefsteak. Like rye. like okay. Ooh. I was gonna say like rye, like rye pumpernickel, or but beef your beefsteak. Steak, gotcha. Rye. Yeah, I got what you're. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Without the beef and the steak. Is that the <laughs> Jewish seeded rye. Is that what that is? The yeah, Jewish like a real robust rye. Robust rye. Yeah. Ooh. Like like that real harsh rye. I bread think I agree with you on the mint. It's still there, but it's not up in your face like the first one was. Yeah, it's it's kind of like sitting back in the shadows, saying I'm you know. Poke, poking you periodically, say, "Hey, I'm still here." I'm Put still its here. leg out the curtain, <laughs> dangling the leg out, you know, like the old times, the Wild West. Why are you looking at me like that, Nick? God damn! <laughs> get, get any of my references tonight? No, I, I completely got it, but I wanted to, to, you to try to describe it more, like Saloon Girl. <laughs> yeah, you know, with her fucking leg out. So I, 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 water, back, back when a leg really got the guys off, you know. Water turns it to straight mint, straight rye, pepper. Ooh. Does uh, like yeah, right. Peppercorn, yeah. You had said Tim oh the tobacco, the tobacco mint spearmint on the first one, I think. Uh-huh. And this just this is a much harsher field rye. You know, if, if you put mint. this in a, in a blind, I mean, how many people would probably vote this to be actually a rye? I mean, probably a lot, I would. but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I mean, no, I, it I, is a high rye bourbon. Yeah, <laughs> under yeah. technicality, technicality. I don't know. I, I, guys, I've, always, I've always been a person that I've enjoyed kind of that peppery, yeah, flavor in in, in some of the bourbons and I'm things like that. Actually, I'm, enjoying the second bottle. Yeah, but I think that might be my niche. I think that could be it. Yeah, I, I actually like this with uh, with a rock. I would say. I mean, I, I like as I said, I I, per, I enjoy the pepper. The pepperiness. I, I, I don't mind the pepperiness, but there's still too much mint for me. Oh, yeah. And it's not the good mint. It's not that spearmint. It's mm-hmm. more of like a peppermint, winter mint, wintergreen mint. The gum. That's spicy. Yeah, that's spicy mint. That's weird. Yeah. Mm-mm. Some of that stuff, I, I remember what turned me off of the, to mint that was time is you put that gum in your mouth and all of a sudden you get that fizz that would run up the, up the back of your nose. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like, it's, it's like sticking to my teeth. And tongue. Yeah. I don't know. And the water just doesn't help it. No, it doesn't. Well, right. this is going to be Scott's least favorite episode that he's had to record, I think. <laughs> in a while. In a long time. Um, but he's I, a trooper because it's friendship. I'll, I'll, Scott. I, <laughs> I, this, to me, is super easy. Number two is the best one. Yes. Five and a half year. Yep. Um, yes. If I'm going to drink it, I still want it neat. Um, number one is probably better with just a splash of water. But uh, two, one is my pick. How about you, John? Same thing. Ditto. 
Ditto. Tim, two, one, one, two. Two is less worse than one. <laughs> The, be- the best of the worst, huh? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. You would need, like, there's not enough cope to chase this stuff. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with you, like, the, I remember trying last year's, right? And I was like, and I didn't get a ton of it. I, I literally got, like, maybe, like, a half an ounce or an ounce, because I, I, I don't remember, like, I didn't get a bottle of it, because I, I didn't make it out to the release. But, like, these are the, these these might be the only two bottles I've had from Starlight, other than a couple of the Tokais that I tried early on that I think mm. are just misses. So, I don't know. And and, and like I said, I think it's because I don't like Bloody Butcher. I think it's the, the way that that corn marries the, the either the malt or it marries the, the rye that it just does something weird. Do you think if you play with the mash bills a little bit, maybe we have a different result? I, you know what? I would be... I would be Really interested to see what like in like like what a Jack Daniels type mash bill mm-hmm. or like a Dickel mash bill would be like eighty four eight eight. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like Drop that super right, almost super, like super yeah super super high corn mm-hmm. enough malt to where you can get some of that viscosity and some of the other things the legs that you want and just enough rye to give it taste. I'd be honest with you, I would like to try it with instead of rye eighty four eight eight but wheat. Or oatmeal, mm. ooh, okay, and malted barley. That actually that wouldn't be good. bad because I mean, if you're talking about this, the 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 because then you would pr- get the, the sweetness and you get a little bit of cinnamon. You drop that like peppery, minty, earthy, yeah. minty thing, and yep. less bloody butcher gives that naturally. But I feel, don't feel like I get quite that much mint when I get it from or, get the, or just switch it to yellow corn. I no, mean, <laughs> listen, I don't mind messing with corns, you know, so. I mean, the thing is, is that these are supposed to represent harvest, right? Yes. At the harvest yeah. time, and so I think you might be spot on with that wheat, because I mean, wheat's coming out around harvest time, being harvested. You know, get that in there, and yep. it might be interesting to try. Yeah, I'm just. It's a thought. No, oh, absolutely, just a thought. I don't know if my thoughts ain't good, but it's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than that. <laughs> so that, that's our episode of uh, Bourbon Barrel Talk. If you want to find us, you can find us on Facebook, the Instagram, or the Twitter slash X. If you want to. Uh, Send out an episode to somebody, or if you want to subscribe, make sure you do that. You know, you can get our episodes as soon as they get dropped, whether it's on uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify is my favorite. You can get it that way. Share it with a friend or a family member. This is Scott, Tim, Nick, and Johnny Tsunami <laughs> signing off. Peace. Good night. Get a good night. Me, uh-huh. Prost. <laughs>